On this episode of DPV, we're going to take these two steering columns and make one good column. So this column here came out of the parts car. It was a black interior car, so all the plastic and trim pieces and everything are factory black, which is nice, because I'm wanting to go black interior. This came out of my car, and it was originally that you know ugly puke green. And so the plastic was painted, and um, it's cracked, and and the paint's kind of chipping away. All this was green at one time. The other thing about the parts car is it was a console ship. So you can see here that that trim ring is for um, console ship. There's no shift knob. My car has the shift knob trim. I need this trim ring because I have a B&M Mega Shifter on the floor. So don't need this anymore. Um, so we're going to take these two columns, use the best chrome pieces, best trim pieces. So the plastic on both my steering wheels is cracked. So I'm, I'm going to try to do some like plastic glue or something, do the best I can to repair them. Priced out aftermarket factory replacement steering wheels and they're about 300 bucks. Might as well do the best I can to make these steering wheels work for now and if I want to replace them later with a new steering wheel I can do that. So I've never tore apart a steering column before so um, I'll be learning right along with you but first thing we're going to do is just uh, pull these screws and start uh, trying to get this steering wheel off. Like, gotta pull the horn buttons off of there. Just a couple more screws. Alright, I'm a little embarrassed of uh, my hardware setup here, but it's like I could go to the store for the right stuff, but that would take, you know half hour 40 minutes I don't have that kind of time or this might work the only bolts I could find that are long enough or uh, this was an oil pan gasket bolt with an accessory stud on the end off the ZJ and uh, got an eye bolt here so it should work we'll see snap ring that I believe holds this on so we we'll use a pick and try to pull that sucker out piece on there. Um, we'll see if I can get that out so we can swap out the tumbler. Alright, so I think 
think I got this tore down as far as I really need to for now. Um, if I tear into this one and find out that I need more parts in here, um, I'll go further. But I've got to where I can get to the tumbler. I know I've got a switch that works. I look into replacing it because it is kind of buried in there. Um, so may want to replace the turn signal switch since I'm in there. Um, but I'll go ahead and tear this one down and uh, see what parts I'm looking at in there. All right, so I got the console shift column tore apart. Um, see, there's not a huge difference. It's just uh, doesn't have the knob. So like basically the same shape inside. This shaft spins and spins inside that the outside of the column. And I was wondering how the heck it comes apart. I think it's this snap ring here. So out of curiosity, um, and to see if I can get in there and pack those bearings, um, I'm gonna try to pull the, the snap ring off and see what happens. trying to figure out how to get the ignition tumbler out of this trim piece here and uh, so I did a quick search on YouTube found a video that's pretty helpful I'm not gonna link it because there's more f-bombs in it that I'm comfortable with linking to a video so um, anyway apparently right in there push your uh, flat blade screwdriver in there and it releases it so we'll try that out and see if it actually works one thing that guy was talking about is how sometimes in there where the hole's supposed to be uh, it wasn't totally punched out from factory. There's still some, you know, metal flashing through there. So you got to chip it out. This one was that way. And that was stubborn, but I finally got it to pop loose there. There we go. Got a nice little injury. All right, got a big old pile of parts there now. These ignition switches are only about 30 bucks, so order one of these from Classic Industries. The ignition tumblers, they're only about $17, so I'll go ahead and order one of those too. Because um, it's a ton of work to get deep inside this column, so might as well replace all the parts I can. I'll get this here painted up. Um, these I'll just try to clean up. Uh, it would be kind of cool to just use the factory paint. Looks like it's in decent decent shape here we got some rust going on so I'll just uh, I'll do some rust-oleum black on that and this here is for the column shift but it's it was on both cars the column shifter rotates this shaft here which then turns this and then and that's attached to some linkage that goes to the transmission I don't need that with the B&M shifter um, and it looks kind of silly to just have this loose arm sticking through the firewall so I'm going to cut this off. I got to leave this collar on because there is a spring that goes on there. You can see what I'm talking about here. See that spring in there. It holds some pressure to hold everything in place. Um, but I don't need this little linkage arm anymore. So I can cut that off. Uh, that'll clean up the firewall a little bit. I'll get a new rag joint while I'm at it. Time to go order some parts. All right, so I'm back at it after having a few days off the project. So right now I'm going to Cut this little arm off. Kind of talked about how I don't need this arm anymore because it's a console shift and not column shift. But you do need this collar to hold the spring. So um, we'll just cut that off. Get these parts cleaned up. Got some of the column parts painted. So 
So now we'll just uh, start putting it back together. I'm still waiting for some parts. I've got the ignition lock cylinder and a new turn signal switch. Hopefully that'll come in the mail today so I can get this thing all buttoned up. Pack some grease in here, shove it in here, shove this in here, and then shove this on here. Let's get after it. together next step is getting this piece on I'm gonna spray a little WD on this try to get it loosened up and then after this goes on that's about as far as I can go until I get my my new parts all right so I screwed up as I usually do this goes on first before this guy Coming together. I'm going to work on some of the chrome stuff. I think the chrome parts that came on my car are actually in better shape than the parts car. Here's the one out of the ghetto glider. Some pitting on there. Here's the one out of the parts car. It's a lot worse. But the black knob pulls off. So I'm going to pull the green knob off of this one. I'm going to do, do some chrome polish on there and see if I can get it to clean up a little bit more and then put the black knob on it. That's nice and shiny now. Chrome don't get you home, but it's kind of nice to have some. Had some of this laying around. Seems like the right stuff to use. The cap's glued on solid. I guess I'm just gonna have to cut it. Probably don't really need much. Get out, my parts came. Boom. All right, so here's the, the new switch. You can see that it does not come with this uh, plastic cover to help protect the wires. I'm going to pull this off, clean it up real quick, put it on here, and then it slips right through this hole here and we'll bolt it all in. Finally.
I'm not going to button this up to put that nut on until I get the tires on because I'm not sure if I'm exactly straight. It'll be a lot easier with the tires on to see if I'm perfectly straight or not. So I went ahead and used my old steering wheel. Can't really squeeze this together to fix the crack so I'm um, just going to run this until I can afford to buy a new wheel because it's pretty easy to take off and uh, replace. The ghetto glider is getting a lot closer to driving. Just got to hook up a couple more brake lines, get the brakes bled, get the tires on, and go test it. Spring's on its way, so should be some good driving weather coming right up. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Like always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.